Um, the only update on the Rakeda drama is that Drexel is in the Discord chat for his streams, acting extremely fucking gross. And I can't even comment on it because I'll just get banned for YouTube. Let me let me just read some of the things that he said. I need to figure out a good way to say like I don't have like a black person voice because his voice is very deep and my voice doesn't go that deep. He just goes like I don't hide shit and unlock 99% of people in the server. I show my face and state my real name. Anyone not on that level is just all take and hand lotion. I hope internet anonymity goes away so we'll see how much shit anyone talks. Refer to troll Charlie Zelenoff running his mouth to then heavyweight champ Deontay Wilder. So he doesn't like... This is Drexel in, in Discord chat. He's talking about... How he doesn't like anonymity, even though that's a constitutional right, and anonymity has been enshrined as a First Amendment pillar since Thomas Paine published Common Sense in the 1700s, because he published that pamphlet anonymously, and it was a landmark literary achievement that persuaded a ton of people into wanting to be independent and to have a liberal society that made the strongest empire the Earth has ever seen. Um, he, he did that anonymously, which is why we generally protect anonymity as a First Amendment right. He would know that if he wasn't, you know... One of them. He continues. Um, the talking about Nick and myself while we make money and live life. Yeah, Major L. Tell me all the legal women you cherish and I'll nut all over them. Be a good boy and eat some black bull cum. I'm get no, I'm getting back to my workout. I'm getting ready to make more money. I hope all is well with you, L. They're all the fucking same. This is why I don't take... Like, I can't, like, find... um. That kill yourself, man, guy. I, I just can't find them funny because be a, a good boy and eat some black bull cum. It's just like you talk to a black person and it's just my dick, my dick, my dick all, every fucking time. He um he's catching a lot of flack because he told this he told this awesome story, which totally wasn't made up and totally isn't from a porn uh, where he was friends with this woman that he was fucking for a long time. And she had a daughter that was a teenager. And then the second that she turns 18, he fucks her daughter and her mother gets upset because, you know, this black guy that she's been seeing fucks her daughter. Which I think there's an expression that is shared around in racist circles about predicaments like this. Uh, but he's like bragging about this. And I'm thinking like, um, that's like quintessential grooming. That's like the actual like definition of grooming especially because you know how when they say like children who get molested they get molested by someone they know that is almost always the stepfather so when you have like a stepfather situation and then you fuck her even if she's legal technically that's really creepy and gross and most people don't don't condone that kind of thing but then he's just like my dick bbc my dick <laughs> <laughs> and he's relaying this story to, you know, Nick Nick Ricada's audience as if it's like this huge win. I'm just like, uh okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's the difference. It, it, the, the reason why it works for us is because, like I said, we've known each other so long. So now I will say this, though, Nick. Has she been someone that I just like met, like, you know, in, in terms of her, you know, her her adult life? Like, you, you know, because you know, I mean, most people, they meet someone. They're meeting a fully grown person. They don't even know this person's background, right? So, you know, if, if you meet someone and she's, say, 20 years old, right? 20, let's say 22, 23. The person is whoever you meet them as at that point, right? You don't know their background. But when you know someone for, since they were 13, the dynamic is different because how you view them is different. So you yeah. can do the, 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 the softer things because of the nature of your relationship. And they, Nick, every one of them, like, you know what's crazy? When her mom talked to me the second time, the first time she just basically just you know tried to rip me a new one, right? The second time she talked to me, um, we we sit down and talk. I was in I was actually in the car and we have a talk. And so Nick, she couldn't believe her daughter was was a sub. Yeah, she's like that just doesn't fit her at all. Cause she's strong. She's I was like that's what makes her a sub. The best sub Nick is not someone who's walks around all day every day being this soft demure but no it's the person who's she's she you know she's strong-willed she's witty she has all those qualities right 
But then once she gets with her Dom, her alpha, she now gets to let go, Nick. Yeah. I don't know. I've never liked Drexel. I'll be honest with you. Because I, I, I'm a knower. I'm a knower of things that, I'm, that people are not allowed to know. Not as Ratu says, to add to Drexel's thing, Nick's audience encourages Drexel to tell him BBC stories and claim they are conservative. These are progressive couples in the epicenter of Portland that are more... There are progressive couples in the epicenter of Portland that are more homogenous, more segregated, and more white trad. Than yeah, I've always found the fascination with Drexel to be weird. He started out as like the not your shield guy, or it's just like, I'm not racist. I was black facing as my black friend. Here's my black friend. And then he just kind of does this thing where he talks about women or whatever. And of course, his, his experience with women is shaped by the fact that he only wants white women. And his experience with women are therefore white women that would have sex with a black guy. So his entire worldview and perspective on women and dating strategies involves uh, like the scummiest fucking people and fucking around with the absolute bottom trash tier women. Um, and then he passes this off as if it's like objective wisdom. And it's like, no, you, you, you are attractive to a specific type of mentally ill person to act like you, you've, you've found the secrets to, you know, dating success is ridiculous. You haven't. You just know how to scoop up the fucking trash. Good for you, bro. Oh, shit. I got exposed. 